Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And on today's Minute Monday, I'm gonna help you take the guesswork on how to make an image go from here to here in a way that's simple, easy, and efficient so that you can create a great image in a short amount of time. So stay tuned. Okay, so now that we're in PixInsight, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to go from these three monochrome image to this final image on the bottom right in a short amount of time. Now, I'm just gonna do a high level overview of the steps because this is a minute Monday, but it still probably will go a little long. But I promise if you stick with it, it will be worth your time. And if not, I'll refund all your money, guaranteed. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a dynamic crop on the image. And now when I do that, I pick the object that has the most amount of stacking artifacts. So the other two have basically none. And if you want to see how to do that and get really consistent images that have almost no stacking artifacts, check out last week's Minute Monday where I give you a, a very simple hack on how to do that. And so what I do is I basically just set a crop so it'll maintain as much data as possible but get rid of those. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to the other two images first using this little triangle down here. And the reason for that is if I hit this to execute, then this will go away and I won't have a way to get a perfectly even crop on these as easily as if I drag these first. And then once I do that, I'm gonna hit the triangle. Now I've already done that, so we're not gonna do it again. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is a dynamic background extraction. Now I know a lot of you guys already know how to do that. I changed the tolerance to 1.0 and then the default radius to 25, minimum sample weight to 0.5. You wanna do a subtraction and you wanna replace the target. Uh, you can generate it. And then what you wanna do is make sure you move these away from the nebulosity and don't land them on a star. So you want it to look something like that because you don't wanna get rid of any signal that's actually good. And so once you run that, you're gonna get an image that looks something like this and it's going to be black because of the process just go ahead and do the stretch again and it will be just fine so the next step is going to be blur exterminator i'm going to do 25 and 65 uh, that's just kind of artist prerogative on that there's really no right or wrong way to do that and so i'm going to go ahead and apply that and you can see the difference on the stars um, even with a pretty minimal setting like 25 it really diminished them and really allowed the nebula to show through the next thing I'm going to do is noise exterminator and I leave completely stock settings so I'm not going to pull that up and we've already done it so you can really see the difference so this is about four and a half hours of 03 data so it's okay but it definitely needs a little bit of help so you can see all the noise there and then we redo and boom it's a clean image. So believe it or not, we are already ready to stretch this image. And so again, I'm gonna do a complete video on generalized hyperbolic stretch. And since it does take a while to stretch these three images, I'm just gonna show you the result. And this is what we get. As you can see, we brought out a lot more of the data. The HA looks phenomenal. And the O3 really has a little bit more pop in this area, which will give us that nice blue hue down here. And then the strong S2 signal around the outside of the core to give us all this really great detail in there. And we're already ready for pixel math. So we're just a few steps in, most of which have been pretty automated. And we are all ready to combine these images and get you something that is ready to take into Photoshop, believe it or not. So the key is in the formulas. So they look a little complicated. Obviously, blue is just going to be 03. But for me, when I do the traditional SHO, I get something that looks nothing like an image that I want. And I have to spend a ton of time with curves, hue adjustments, saturation, masks, all these other tools that I really don't want to use. And when I do this formula that you can just go ahead and copy and paste from the description, I get something that looks exactly like this. Now, if you're looking for a more natural version of this, I saw Polyman Astro put out a video a couple days ago on the natural look. You can run more of an HOO. And all you have to do for that is you can leave the, the green and the blue channel the same. You're just going to replace the red channel with HA and give us an HOO create new image, RGB color, just like we did for this one. And then when we hit submit on that, we're gonna get this image. So these are your two options. And frankly, both of these to me are almost ready to be posted if you wanted. What I would do to get to this final image is I would now go starless. So run either star exterminator or star net to get images that look like this. Do another dynamic background extraction just to clean it up. And then I took it into Photoshop and just did some final touches 
uh, mostly using the camera raw filter. I've spent another five or 10 minutes to get, uh, to get this. So I'm gonna do this image as well. I haven't done it yet, but you can see with just a few short automated, mostly AI steps, we've gone from you know, just a stretched image from weighted batch pre-processing, you know, two images that are really ready to just go in Photoshop and put some final touches. So if there's anything besides GHS that you want me to cover in detail, please leave in the comments below. If this was valuable to you, if you could go ahead and leave me a like and subscribe, and I will cover more processing tutorials as time goes on and any feedback is welcome. So I know exactly what you guys want me to cover. So in the meantime, clear skies. <laughs>